Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast Series. My name is Ashley, your host, and we are going to spend this episode diving into the wonderful and very fascinating world of cotton. Cotton fiber, cotton yarn, cotton blends, mercerized cotton, where that cotton comes from, what makes Egyptian cotton better than other kinds of cotton, is it really even Egyptian cotton? right? We're going to get all into that nitty gritty and it's fascinating, I promise you. We are going to walk away from this podcast knowing a lot more about cotton and its production than you did when we walked into it. I can promise you that, or that is my goal anyway. At least for this entire podcast series, I want you to learn something every time you come visit me here on my little crochet couch corner, right? So, cotton. Ah, I love cotton. I use cotton for anything from hot pads in my kitchen to making dresses. I have made dresses, full blown, could be a wedding dress type of crochet garments with cotton. And so learning how to pick your cotton blend um, and what you want to get out of it is, is it's important. And so we're going to dive into all of that today. So I do have a <laughs> clipboard with a handy dandy list of all of the things that I wanna make sure that I cover because I am a huge list person. And I feel like if I don't have a list, it's not going to get said and I don't want to forget anything. So I will be periodically checking this list as I go along. So let me give you a little bit of some backstory here and why I find cotton to be so fascinating. So a couple of years ago, um, I took a spinning class from the Wichita Crochet Guild. And when I say spinning, I don't mean aerobic because I don't, I don't do that. But um, the spinning where you take fiber and you spin it into yarn, right? And so my instructor was absolutely amazing. So interesting because not only did she teach us how to take these fibers and spin them into yarn, but she also gave us homework and we had to read up on the different kinds of fibers that we were spinning and why why they would um, react a certain way, or if you need to spin it super fast because the fibers are so short, or if you wanna do more of a long draw because your fibers are really long, right? It's very interesting. She did an amazing job, and she really instilled like this passion of, of fiber for me, you know? So even if you're not particularly interested in spinning, if you can get into one of those classes, it's fascinating and I highly recommend it. it. It has really helped me to understand the properties of each fiber and each yarn and why I would want to use a certain yarn or blend um, for a particular pattern opposed to another type of fiber or blend for, you know, that same exact thing. So, first things first, there are three main types of cotton. Okay, there are, when we're talking about where it's sourced, there's upland cotton, which makes up about 90% of all of the cotton in the world, okay? So 90%, that's a huge chunk. The other 10% is made up of Egyptian cotton and Pima cotton, which genetically are identical. The only difference between Egyptian cotton and Pima cotton is where it's grown. Egyptian cotton obviously is grown in Egypt, and Pima cotton is typically in the American South right? So either you've got your Pima cotton or your Egyptian cotton, and together those only make up 10% of all of the cotton in the world. 90% is upland cotton, which is, um, when I'm talking about the length of your fibers, what in the spinning world, right, staple length is what's that, that the, the definition of the length of your fiber is called your staple length. So you might have some super, super short fibers that are really hard to spin, or you might have some really long fibers. The longer the fiber, generally speaking, the nicer the yarn. And that goes for cotton as well. Part of, the, part of what makes Egyptian cotton and Pima cotton so sought after, like for our bed sheets and our Egyptian cotton towels and things like that, part of the reason those are so um, coveted, I suppose would be the word, um, is because the yarn that is made from those long fibers comes out with a much more silky texture and there's not as many, um, when you have a very short staple length and you were spinning your yarn, or even in the mill, um, it's it's a lot more opportunity to feel the yarn ends. Does that make sense? So the yarn feels a little bit coarser itself. The longer the fiber, the smoother the yarn, the smoother the texture, the higher the quality, the more luxurious the feel. And that is why those longer fiber cottons, which is the Pima and the Egyptian, are so sought after and so expensive. So fascinating, right? Pretty interesting. But when you go to the store, say you go to Michael's, Joanne, Hobby Lobby, wherever it is that you're buying your yarn, and you see on the yarn label 100% cotton, 
almost guaranteed that that is going to be an upland cotton. And all that means is that the cotton itself, when it comes out of the plant, is shorter, the fibers are shorter than the Egyptian or the Pima cotton. Isn't that interesting? I find that fascinating. So anyway, 100% cotton, which we have here. We have, I have a list, of course I have a list. We have this Dishy, which is my favorite 100% cotton. I just love it. It's from Knit Picks or We Crochet online, and it's got a great sheen to it. It holds up really well. It doesn't pill over much when you put it in the washer. It's got these great colors, great vibrancy, right? A lot of sheen to it. It's just gorgeous. I've used 100% cotton to make all of my dishcloths. In the year 2020, I had a cloth series on Heart Hook Home where every month we published, or I published, three different sizes of a crocheted cloth. So we did a little five by five, we did an 11 by 11 or 11 and a half by 11 and a half and an 18 by 12, so like a placemat size. So I did three sizes and every month we did a different stitch. So we would learn a stitch and then we'd practice that stitch making the little five inch square, which is a perfect size to learn something, right? Um, but I've made all of my washcloths using 100% cotton because it's great for the kitchen. It won't melt. That's one of the things that we need to note about cotton blends, especially if it's blended with acrylic. Acrylic will melt, so you do not want to use any of that in the kitchen. If you're going to be um, using it for a hot pad, you don't wanna put a hot thing on something that's gonna melt. You know, you might think, oh, it's got cotton in it. Surely it's gonna be okay. Eh, may, probably not, you know. Um, you do not want that acrylic to melt. But um, it, one other thing about 100% cotton is that it will shrink. I have, um, just last week, I published this pattern using the extended half double crochet stitch, right? And so I have not washed my green one yet. I have a green one here and I have a gray one here and I have not washed the green one yet because I haven't used it. It's just been in the bottom of my drawer. I have about 50 million crocheted washcloths over there. So, <laughs> um, but I took my gray one that I made and I washed it last night to make sure that I could share this with you because it is fascinating to me how much these shrink down. Um, these stitches, it's not a ton, but see how much smaller the gray one is and that is lined up perfectly at the top there. You can see how much tighter those stitches look as opposed to the green one, which there's nothing wrong with that, but just to note that when you do crochet something with 100% cotton, it will shrink a, at least a little bit, right? Something that I've learned throughout that 2020 cloth series is to use a little bit of a large larger hook than you think you're going to need. So if you start crocheting something up and it looks kind of open, like it's, eh, it's a little, I feel like I need to go down a hook size, maybe you don't because when you wash it, it is going to tighten up significantly. And that is something that I learned. Um, this is the extended half double. Isn't that beautiful? But um, that's something that I have learned as I've crocheted and then washed things like, ooh, maybe I should have stayed that hook size up. So just keep in mind, maybe make up a little square for yourself. Measure it before you put it in the washer. When you pull it out, measure it to see how much it actually shrank. It's pretty interesting to see the difference between the two, right? Yeah, so here we are. I'll, I'll see if I can include a, a picture for you on the inlay to see how, how much really of a difference that truly made. So when we are talking about um, different kinds of cotton, we have 100% cotton, which is used for dishcloths and everything else. Anything that you want to be hot, anything in the kitchen. I've used this 100% cotton to make garments for myself as well. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can use it for just about anything. But I find personally that a cotton blend, which could be like this comfy worsted right here. This is a 75% Pima cotton, which we now know is the same as Egyptian cotton, right? Technically speaking, scientifically speaking, it's the exact same, and a 25% acrylic. This is what I used to make my shorts that I made because I wanted it to have, um, to not stretch out too much. That's another property of cotton that I love is that it's not going to stretch over much, which is why we like to use 100% cotton for um, like market bags or anything sturdy. Like the casserole carrier that I posted at the end of 2021, um, it's one that you put your 9 by 13 baking dish in and then you fold it in and you've you've got your handles and you carry your casserole to the potluck or whatever but that's part of the reason that I tried or decided to use a 100% cotton on that because I didn't want it to stretch out too much when we go to actually carry our heavy you know green bean casserole or yams or whatever it is we're taking to the big potluck right so 
That's one of the properties of cotton that I love is that it does not stretch. It does shrink, but it doesn't generally stretch. So I like to use cotton blends in my garments because I like the weight that cotton gives to a thing to a to a piece. I feel like it gives it a nice feel, a nice drape to it. Um, sometimes I've noticed when I use a yarn that is 100% acrylic or even um, like a mohair or a baby alpaca or something that's very light, it doesn't hang as nicely necessarily as a heavier cotton blend for me, for my liking anyway. Now, there are some things that you could do to combat that if you still wanted to use the mohair or the baby or alpaca or anything like super, super lightweight. Um, you could go up a hook size or several hook sizes and that will help it get that nice drape to it. I personally just really like the way that cotton blends feel and the way that um, that it hangs. I just feel like it looks great. So this one right here is a different, these are both by the We Crochet or Knit Picks, but this one right here is actually a 70% cotton and 30% linen blend. This is one that I've used for several patterns for cardigans just because I really enjoy the way that it hangs and it looks amazing. So when we also have um, mercerized cotton and one of my most popular patterns from the early days of Heart Hook Home is my Aldi quarter keeper. So if you have an Aldi store near you, you know that the carts take these quarters, right? And so it's a keychain that you leave your quarter in there. When you go to Aldi, you take your quarter out, you put it in the um, cart, you do your shopping, and then when you put your cart back, your quarter pops out and you put it back in your keychain, right? It's an excellent, it's actually a brilliant business model if you ask me because they don't have to pay any employees to go and round up the carts from the parking lot, or minimally anyway, because you want your quarter back, right? So it's a great way or an incentive to get people to actually return the cards, right? Anyway, one of my most popular patterns from the early days is the Aldi Quarter Keeper pattern. It's a keychain. You can either leave it in your car or leave it on your actual keychain. Um, it's pretty small, but we used a mercerized cotton for that. And a mercerized cotton is any, it's like a crochet thread. So there's Curio, which is from We Crochet or Knit Picks. There's Curio number 10, Curio number three. There's Aunt Lydia's in number five, number three, number 10. Um, and all that that means when we're talking about the crochet thread and the size of it, like the number three, the number five, the number 10, the larger the number, so like a, a Curio three is a lot larger than a Curio number 10. With crochet thread, the larger the number, the smaller the thread. So it's kind of backwards. You would think that a number 10 would be bigger than a number three, but a number 10 is actually smaller. Anyway, the point is that um, with the mercerized cotton, what they do to it is they actually treat it. So it's treated cotton to make it stronger and more durable. So that is why we use mercerized cotton in specific crochet patterns like the Aldi Quarter Keeper or various different um, purse patterns. There's sun hat patterns that are made out of it. In fact, my sun hat pattern that I have, it's a big floppy sun hat, that's made out of mercerized cotton. I have a bead bag, which is a crocheted crossbody with a bunch of beads that are crocheted into it. Fabulous pattern. Um, there's a video tutorial as well, um, but that's using mercerized cotton. The Aldi Quarter Keeper uses mercerized cotton. Basically anything that needs to be extremely durable. So number one, we've got the cotton in there, which is great. But number two, it's treated to be extra strong. So that is why you would want to use your mercerized cotton um, for things that need to be super sturdy like that. So when we're talking about these different kinds of uh, cotton blend yarns, typically, um, as long as it's blended with cotton, it is a cotton blend. It can have only 10% cotton, right? So I did, um, the other day, I received a package in the mail from Hobie, you know, the yarn company that is um, amazing and everybody loves. Um, I'm going to be doing a review on their yarns here on the Heart Hook Home YouTube channel um, in the next couple of weeks, but I didn't want to get too much into the package because I'm, I'm trying to do a blind review, but I did know that I ordered some cotton blend yarns or 100% cotton that I'll show you here in a second. So I wanted to pull these out and take a look with you because cotton is in this gorgeous, look at that color. Oh my gosh, it's freaking beautiful. Um, I don't remember what color this is, but it's absolutely delicious. And I am very excited about this one. But cotton blends usually are blended with either acrylic or linen or polyester or whatever. As long as there's a cotton in there, it is considered a cotton blend, right? Which 
I do appreciate even, um, especially for garments, even just having that little bit of cotton will keep everything from stretching out. Like I feel like um, if you've been crocheting sweaters or anything like that, you may have noticed, depending on what yarn you chose or what stitch it used, that after you wash it and wear it a few times, sometimes those stitches really tend to stretch out. And that's so aggravating after you put all of that time and effort and love into this crochet project. And all of a sudden it's like, ah, like it's, an, it's a whole nother size bigger, right? But um, if you've got a little bit of cotton in there, that really helps to keep its shape and to keep it from stretching out. So another thing that I ordered from Hobie that I am really looking forward to, and I haven't even touched these yet because it's still in the bag and I wanna leave it in the bag for when I do my review because I don't, I mean, I don't wanna go in there with a biased opinion already, but look at those beautiful colors. So cotton comes, this is a 100% cotton as well, but cotton comes in such a beautiful, I mean, it comes in a very natural state obviously um, it's a whitish color but I mean it can be dyed into literally anything and I love how this rainbow effect right here just looks so pretty it's just so gorgeous so I'm itching to open this bag but I'm not gonna do it so make sure you check back <laughs> on the YouTube channel so that you can see me actually playing with all of this yarn I got some really amazing stuff and I'm very excited to see how it all feels and I tried not to try not to touch it too much you know what I mean so some of the very popular cotton blends that you'll find in the stores, because I included that on my list, of course I did. The Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. That is a 50-50 cotton polyester blend. I absolutely love that yarn for garments. That is what I made the On Point Poncho with, the cream color one. Absolutely love that. I also made the Brown Filet Poncho with that one. Absolutely gorgeous. And see the way that it drapes. It's absolutely stunning. Love Love, love the Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. The Burnett Softy Cotton is also an excellent cotton blend. That's a 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, which is great for garments as well. Um, they do have a baby version, and I absolutely love that. I am working on a new crochet pattern right now for an open shell cardigan that is going to be published the first weekend or the first week of February 2022. And I used, um, or I contemplated using that yarn because because the cotton gives it such a lovely drape and the colors are gorgeous. Um, but yeah, there's Kotlin, which is this one, who is that is another popular cotton blend, which is the 70% cotton and 30% linen, which gives it a very, hmm, not a rough texture, but just a very, um, it's not super soft, but it's it's got a great drape to it. And then another one that you might see, particularly in fancy yarn shops, is the Premier Cotton Fair, the ones that are sold in the little um, balls like this. And they are 52% cotton and 48% um, a acrylic and it's absolutely gorgeous as well. So anytime that you are needing a nice drape with a beautiful sheen, try something with cotton. I know that this is um, a lot of information, but I think that it's also very pertinent information. It's interesting information. So now hopefully you can tell everyone you know about the differences between Egyptian and Pima and Upland cotton and why you would want to use one as opposed to the other and why you shouldn't necessarily buy sheets that say Egyptian cotton because it's the exact same thing as Pima cotton. Um, and yeah. It's all very fascinating and very interesting. And I hope that you enjoyed yourself today with me on the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys next time on the YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.